Hi, this is Judith Karakshon, and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 192 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of retrograde CTO crossing through a saphenous vein graft. The patient was an elderly gentleman who had a complex cardiac history. He had coronary bypass graft surgery twice, the most recent surgery being three years prior. And he presented two months prior with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He had a patent vein graft to diagonal with a distal anastomotic lesion that was angioplasted, but no stents were placed due to concerns for causing a complication. There was also an unsuccessful attempt for canalizing a right coronary CTO, and the patient had a normal ejection fraction. He was sent for PCI of an osteal LAD CTO. Engagement of the SVT to diagonal was challenging, but was eventually achieved with a multipurpose guide. This is a dual injection. There is a saphenous vein graft to the diagonal that then fills the LAD, which seems to have a significant lesion and the, at the mid-segment, which is likely the patient's culprit for angina, given that uh, the LAD is a very large vessel. So the plan here was to recanalize the LAD CTO. The LAD had an osteal occlusion with an ambiguous proximal cap, length of about 30 millimeters. The distal vessel was filling retrograde through the saphenous vein graft to the diagonal. Given the proximal cap ambiguity, our plan was to start with a primary retrograde approach through the saphenous vein graft to the diagonal, and if that did not work, then perform IVUS and try to locate the proximal cap and do undergrade wire escalation. Despite the ejection fraction, because um, we were going to go through the, one of the patient's last remaining vessels, we decided to use hemodynamic support with an impeller CP device. We were then able to advance easily a Sion Black polymer jacketed wire, retrograde from the SVG going into the LAD and then into a septal branch. We advanced the turnpike LP. This is a distal tip injection demonstrating the distal cap that was blunt. We had some uh, difficulty with support. We used the Sasuki dual lumen microcatheter to advance uh, a wire down in the LAD, but the support was not good and eventually we lost the wire and guide position. And this is one of the lessons of this case in which when engagement is not good, using a guide extension can really increase the support of the system. This was a six French telescope. And then once again, we were able to advance a Sion black guide wire retrograde and then deliver a turnpike LP, which is now pointing towards the distal cap. We then did undergrade wire escalation with a Gaia NX2. Um, there was some difficulty advancement. However, with persistent, there was some forward movement of the guide wire. The lesion actually appeared to be shorter than we had initially thought. And we can see here the wire seems to make some progress. We did intravascular ultrasound to determine whether we had crossed uh, into the true lumen or extra plaque, which is very important in cases like this. And what was found is that actually the wire was into the true lumen and the entry point was uh, into the left main without extra plaque component. This is very important because if it causes co crosses extra plaque and with balloon, there's a possibility of uh, causing occlusion of the circumflex when stents are placed. We were eventually able to switch for a gladius mongo that then was advanced into the undergrade guide catheter. We advanced the turnpike LP and externalized an R350 guide wire and then used the Sasuki dual lumen microcatheter to advance an undergrade workhorse wire to the distal LAD. This is in geography. After performing balloon and geoplasty, we did um, 2.0 and 2.5 millimeter balloons. However, there was difficulty expanding the lesion in the proximal LAD that was heavily calcified as confirmed by intravascular ultrasound. Again, there is extensive calcification. We did uh, high pressure inflation with a non-compliant balloon. And eventually we decided to use intravascular lithotripsy with a 2.5 millimeter balloon that then allowed a 275 balloon to successfully expand. 
We stand it all the way from the left main ostium into the mid LED. We did have wires for protection in both the circumflex as well as the ramus branch. But uh, fortunately, there was no compromise in the flow in either of those two branches. There was some residual disease. That's why we placed an additional drug eluting stand that was post dilated with a 275 millimeter balloon and an angiosculpt. But by intravascular ultrasound, there was poor expansion, again, because of heavy calcification. So we ended up repeating intravascular lithotripsy, this time with a 3.0 millimeter balloon, and we were then able to expand it with a non-compliant balloon. Here is the final intravascular ultrasound. We can see that there is good expansion uh, throughout the stand into the LED going all the way to the left main. The left main actually was not completely covered by IVUS, and that is why we uh, placed an additional 3.5 by 8 millimeter drug eluting stand. And this was the final result with good backflow and excellent flow into the LED, as well as the ramus and the circumflex. So multiple lessons from this particular case. The first one is that um, the vein grafts can be a very efficient and safe way to perform retrograde crossing of CTOs. A primary retrograde is indicated in patients with ambiguous proximal cap, and this was the situation in our patient. The support can be poor when performing PCI through vein grafts and using a guide extension up front can help increase the support and facilitate crossing of the lesions. Intravascular lithotripsy can be very useful for balloon dilatable lesions and for calcified lesions, use of intravascular imaging is critical to ensure that a nice result has been achieved with good stand expansion. Thank you.